Assume there are two factories and three warehouses. Factory 1 makes 40 widgets. Factory 2 makes 50 widgets. Now warehouse A stores 15 widgets. Warehouse B stores 45 widgets. And warehouse C stores 30 widgets. Now it costs $80 to ship one widget from factory 1 to warehouse A, $1.75 to ship one widget from factory 1 to warehouse B, $1.60 to ship one widget from factory 1 to warehouse C, $1.65 per widget to ship from factory 2 to warehouse A, $1.70 per widget to ship from factory 2 to warehouse B and $1.75 per widget to ship from factory 2 to warehouse C. Use the least cost method to find a feasible solution to the shipping problem. So here there is a company which has two factories. Let's say the first factory is in India and let's call it F1 and the second factory is in China and let's call it F2. So these are the two factories where this company is manufacturing widgets. Now this company has decided to make Europe as its market where it wants to sell these widgets. So it has three warehouses in various countries in Europe. Warehouse A, Warehouse B and Warehouse C. So let's say this is Warehouse A. This is Warehouse B. And this is Warehouse C. Now it has been given that factory 1 makes 40 widgets. So the supply capacity at factory 1 is 40 widgets per day. Now factory 2 makes 50 widgets. So the supply capacity at factory 2 is 50 widgets per day. Now warehouse A can store 15 widgets. So definitely warehouse A would like to have 15 widgets in its warehouse at all the time. So we can say that demand at warehouse A is 15 widgets per day. Warehouse B can store 45 widgets. So demand at B is 45 widgets per day. And warehouse C can store 30 widgets. So the demand here is 30 widgets per day. Now any of the factories can ship the material to any of the warehouses. And we have been given the cost of shipping one widget from each of the factories to each of the warehouses. So from factory 1 to warehouse A the cost is $1.80 per widget. So the cost is $1.80 per widget. $75 to ship one widget from factory 1 to warehouse B. So this is $1.75 per widget and $1.60 to ship one widget from factory 1 to warehouse C. So this is $1.60 per widget. Now similarly for factory number 2 the cost is $1.65 per widget to ship from factory 2 to warehouse A. $1.65 
so this is dollar sixty five per widget dollar seventy per widget to ship from factory two to warehouse B so this is dollar seventy per widget and dollar seventy five per widget to ship from factory two to warehouse C so this is dollar seventy five per widget now we have to find out a feasible solution to ship material from these factories to the warehouses such that the supply and demand constraints are not violated and we have to use the least cost method to do that now step number one in solving the transportation model is the formulation of transportation table so step number one is formulation of transportation table now we have been given that there are two factories and three warehouses so let's create the table So factory F1 and F2 and there are three warehouses WA, WB and WC. Now we have been given that factory 1 makes 40 widgets. So let's put the supply here. So for factory 1, the supply capacity is 40 widgets per day and factory 2 makes 50 widgets per day. So supply capacity for F2 is 50. Now warehouse A stores 15 widgets. So let's say the demand for warehouse A is 15 widgets per day. Warehouse B stores 45 widgets and warehouse C stores 30 widgets. Now it costs $80 to ship one widget from F1 to WA. So let's put the unit cost here as $80. $75 per unit to ship from F1 to WB and $60 per unit to ship from F1 to WC. Now for factory 2, $65 per widget from F2 to WA, $70 from F2 to WB and $75 from F2 to WC. Now after formulating this transportation table, we have to do a check to find out if the total supply is equal to the total demand. If both of them are equal, then the problem is said to be balanced and if not, a dummy origin or destination is added to balance the supply and demand situation. So here let's add the supply. So 40 plus 50 is 90 and for demand 15 plus 30 is 45 and 45 plus 45 again is 90. So supply is equal to demand which is equal to 90. So this transportation table is said to be balanced. So we can now proceed to step number two. Which is to establish the basic initial feasible solution.
and in this case we will be using the least cost method now the first step in the least cost method is to evaluate the transportation cost and select the square with the lowest cost so as the name suggests the least cost method will first start allocating to the square which has the lowest cost so now on evaluation we find that this square F1WC has the lowest cost of $60 per unit now the next step is depending upon the supply and demand condition allocate the maximum possible units to the square having the lowest cost so for F1 the supply capacity is 40 units per day whereas for WC the demand is 30 units per day so even though F1 can supply more WC only needs 30 so we'll allocate 30 units to this square now with this allocation the demand at WC becomes 0 while the supply at F1 becomes 40 minus 30 which is equal to 10 units now the next step is to delete the row or column or both satisfied by the allocation so here with this allocation the entire demand at WC has been met so there is no point allocating anything else to WC so we can put a cross here indicating that WC is no longer available for any further allocation now again from the remaining squares let's find out the square with the lowest cost so let's choose F2WA because this has the lowest cost in the remaining squares now let's evaluate the supply and demand condition here so F2 has a supply capacity of 50 units while WA has a demand of 15 units so even though F2 can supply more than the demand at WA we can only allocate 15 units because that is the maximum WA needs so now with this allocation the demand at WA becomes 0 while the remaining supply capacity at F2 is 50 minus 15 which is 35 and now since the entire demand at WA has been met we can cross off this box because WA doesn't need any other allocation now from the remaining squares let's find out which one has the lowest cost so F to WB has the lowest cost now let's evaluate the supply and demand situation so F2 has a supply capacity of 35 whereas WB has a demand of 45 so even though WB needs 45 units F2 can only supply 35 units so the maximum we can allocate is 35 units to this square so with this allocation the entire supply capacity at F2 has been exhausted so the remaining supply at F2 is 0 however WB still has a demand of 10 units now for F2 all these squares are either allocated or crossed off so we don't have to cross off any of the squares for F2 let's now take the next square so we only have one square remaining now which is F1WB now let's evaluate the supply and demand condition so F1 has a supply of 10 which is available while WB has a demand of 10 units so supply and demand is equal let's allocate 10 units here so with this allocation the remaining demand at WB becomes 0 while the supply capacity remaining at F1 also becomes 0 so now with this allocation all the demand and supply has been allocated so this becomes our initial basic feasible solution using the least cost method now let's find out the total cost of transportation achieved by this solution so the total cost is equal to 10 multiplied by 75 
So 10 is the number of units allocated to this square, while 75 is the unit cost of transporting each unit from F1 to WB. Plus 30 multiplied by 60 plus 15 multiplied by 65 plus 35 multiplied by 70. So this is equal to 75 multiplied by 10 is 7, 5 and 1, 0 plus 6, 3 is 18 and 2, zeros plus 15, 5 is 75, 7 carry over, 15, 6 is 90 plus 7, 97 plus 7, 5 is 35, 3 carry over, 7, 3 is 21 plus 3, 24 and then 1, 0. So this is equal to $5,975.